Okay, uh, so let's have a look over this one here. So the first part of the question wants to know the total displacement over the whole trip, which is draw all the shapes, okay, uh, like we've been doing. So we are going to have, here's our um, x-axis right here. So we're going to have, and I think I drew this at the end of the day, whoops, yesterday. A rectangle, and have a triangle, another rectangle, okay, this triangle here, that triangle there, um, and then we will have this triangle, and we will have that rectangle there, okay, this triangle here, and this triangle here. All right, so those will be our shapes that we'll have to calculate the areas of in order to get our average velocity times time results. Okay, so first off, this bottom rectangle here is three high by 10 long, so that's 30 meters. Okay, this uh, triangle here goes from three to 12, so it's nine high by three long, that's 27 over two is 13 and a half. Uh, this rectangle here is um, also nine high, and it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's 63 meters there. Um, and then we're gonna have this triangle here, which goes from 13 to 28. So that's 15. Yeah, uh, 15 high by one, two, three, four. So that's 60 that's divided by two, that's 30 meters. Uh, this one here is 28 high by one, two, three and a half. And I'm done doing that in my head. Okay, uh, 28. Whoop, not doing divided by two. All right, so we're looking at 49 for that one. And then we've got one that is negative 12 by one and a half, so that'll be negative 18 meters. This one here is negative two by one, two, three, four, five, so that's negative 10. Uh, this one goes from negative two to negative 12, so it's 10 high by one, two, three, four, five, so this is 25. And then we've got this little triangle here. Um, which is negative two high two, so that's negative two meters. Okay, you guys getting similar numbers? I tried to do that really fast, which is probably a recipe for disaster, but that's what I did. Okay, all right, so if we put all of those together, we should have our total displacement. So we will have 13.5 plus 63 plus 30 plus 30 plus 49 uh, minus 18 minus 25 minus 12. All right, I'm getting 130 and a half. I think you forgot to divide the 18. Yeah. Which one? The 18. You're absolutely right, minus six. 124 and a half? Is that a tricky one? Is there a lot there? There's a lot there. There's a lot of chance for making a small mistake. Again, I'm never going to give you one like that on a quiz or a test. This was one just for the sake of practicing our skills. Okay, on a test you'd have three shapes. Okay, kind of like the one you had this morning. I think it had five, but I mean it still wasn't a lot. Okay, and they were fairly obvious and simple. Okay, um, so graphic. Uh, we're still going to have our velocity versus time graphing lab on Thursday, okay? But we're not going to spend a lot more time practicing graphs. If it's something that's giving you trouble, then you're going to need to come in and see me and make sure you do all the ones from the digital workbook, okay? And if you want, you can come in and I can give you some extra ones if you come in for help at nighttime or um, lunch or something like that, okay? All right, then moving on to acceleration. Last number in the equation wrong. Is it 
I think it was negative two instead of negative 12. No, I added the 10 and the two. There was a negative 10 um, triangle and the negative two triangle and I put them together. So, sorry, negative 10 rectangle and a negative two triangle. And of course, I've closed it now, so I don't have any of it. You had a 30 instead of 32. I had a what? I think you had a 30 instead of 32. Okay. It's quite possible. I did all of it in my head, which I shouldn't have done. I probably should have calculated it all. Okay. Um, so I need you guys to find this lesson in your notes package. This one is in your notes package, okay? It's lesson 10 on acceleration. So this is a natural progression from velocity versus time graphs where we can see acceleration, calculate acceleration, okay? And we've already talked about the formula that we'll use because it was the slope of a velocity versus time graph. Okay, so we'll be looking at basically what the definition of acceleration is and looking to solve a few problems with this formula, okay? This will be your first true algebraic challenge of this unit, okay? I mean, y equals mx plus b is slightly challenging, but this will be more so. Okay. All right, so the first thing we have to understand about acceleration is this. If something is going to accelerate, it's going to require a few things. The first thing is it's going to require energy. Energy is going to be required because work is going to have to be done in order to make the object change its velocity because that will be changing its kinetic energy. Okay, and any change in mechanical energy is work. We talked about that way back at the beginning of the unit. Okay, so in order for an object to accelerate, work has to be done. Work is done when a force is exerted over a distance. So you basically push on something. Okay, push on it, it'll accelerate. Okay, everyone follow me there. All right, so this idea of acceleration requiring all this stuff tells us that if that stuff isn't present, what's the object not going to do? It's not going to accelerate. Okay, that's something that we call inertia. Okay, inertia is like the one word summation of Newton's first law. Okay. Newton's first law says this. That chair is going to stay right there, provided I don't do anything to it. Well, duh. Of course it's going to stay there if I don't do anything to it. Okay? There's no forces acting on it. There's no work being done to it. Actually, there are forces acting on it. There are two forces acting on it right now. What are they? Gravity. Okay, what's keeping it from falling? Is the floor keeping it from falling? Okay, that means the floor is exerting an equal force upwards. Okay, that's actually Newton's third law, which you've probably heard before. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, right now gravity's pulling the chair into the floor. To keep it from falling, the floor has to push up with an equal amount of force in the opposite direction. But that means that all the forces balance. So no work is being done, okay? which is why it sits right there. Okay? So the inertia is a tendency of an object to, at rest to remain at rest, or an object in motion to stay in motion at a constant velocity. Okay. This is what would have happened to Mark Watney okay, at the end of the Martian when he was you know, doing the Iron Man thing. Okay. If he had run out of air okay, to push him, he would have continued moving in a straight line in whatever direction he was going when he ran out. Okay. That's Newton's first law. Newton's first law sucks in terms of being an astronaut and not having any propulsion or in any form of car collision. Okay? It is Newton's first law that is the reason you are to wear a seatbelt. Because if you don't wear a seatbelt, you will continue to travel at a constant velocity when the car stops. Agreed? Right? I mean, 
that, that's horrific, but that's what happens. Okay, if the car stops and you are not secured to the car by a seatbelt, you will obey Newton's first law and you will continue to move at a constant velocity until you are acted upon by an external unbalanced force. The windshield, the road, other unpleasant things that you don't want to be acting on you. Okay? That is why you are to wear your seatbelt in the car. Okay? It is the most second, second most important safety feature in your car. Okay? What's the most important safety feature? Nope. Nope. Those are all good. They're all safety. They're all good. Whatever keeps your engine from leaking and exploding? Nope. The ignition? Those are all good answers, though. You'll never guess what the most important one is. Mass. Think about it. If you have a choice in a head-on collision between being in a smart car or a semi-truck, which would you pick? Yeah, because the semi-truck is always going to win. Why? It's always bigger. Okay. Mass is the most important safety feature your car can have, and not all of them have it. Okay. If you drive a small car and you get in a crash, well, in every crash there's a winner and a loser. And the small car is the loser because it has less mass. Okay. And your mass affects your acceleration, and it's your acceleration that hurts you. Okay, so the bigger you are, the less acceleration you experience. Okay? Um, we got in a crash a few years ago. A lady turned left in front of us. Somehow didn't see the giant SUV bearing down on her. Okay? Whatever. I don't know if she was distracted or what. She turned left right into our path. She was driving a little, like, I don't know, Ford Focus, the little sedan. Well, I tell you what. We went through that car like a hot knife through butter. Okay, because it was small, and we were not. Okay, mass matters. We won. Airbags didn't even go off. Hers did. Pushed her right through the intersection. Win. Okay, mass matters. When I have more mass, I have more inertia. My tendency is to keep doing what I was doing already, because I have more mass. Okay, so if you're considering getting a car. Let mass actually be a consideration because it's a big part of the safety of the vehicle. Okay? It is why I drive a truck. I like to win. I'm very competitive. Okay? Even in something that might destroy what I'm driving, I still want to win. Okay? Winning is important because winning is safety in a car crash. All right? um, so if you want to drive a smart cop in a car, you you know you can uh, yeah you can do that but understand that your smart coffin car is going to lose in most collisions because it's really small okay yeah you you just want to be in something bigger in a crash it's safer okay. all right because inertia is affected by your mass so more mass you have more inertia you have good for you bad for others okay so the definition of acceleration is this. Undo that. The definition of acceleration is the rate at which you change your velocity. So whenever an object's velocity is changing, the object is accelerating. Okay? That can be speeding up or slowing down. Remember in physics, we don't use the term decelerate. Okay? And acceleration can be positive or negative. Okay. Now, the best acceleration of not so much average, but we might want to change that word to uniform. Okay, uniform acceleration is a plane taking off. Okay, a car pulling away from a stoplight is a terrible example of, of, acceler of uniform acceleration because it doesn't accelerate uniformly. Okay, a plane, if I had a graph of a plane during takeoff, it would be very linear like that. That's uniform acceleration. Okay? A car pulling away from a stoplight actually looks like this. That's not uniform. The rate at which it accelerates is constantly changing along that curve. Why are they different? What does a car have that a plane doesn't that would make its graph look like that? Gears. Gears. Yeah. Okay? If your car has a transmission, okay, it's 
acceleration curve is going to look like this because that would be like first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. If you have sixth, that thing got there's some that have 10 speeds now. Okay, but the, the more gears you have, okay, the more linear that graph will sort of, well, actually the less linear it will look. Okay, if you don't have any gears, you can have much more linear uh, acceleration curve. An electric car has a much more linear acceleration curve because it doesn't have to switch gears. Okay? What does start the thing to flatten is actually air resistance. The faster you go, the more air resistance there is and the slower you accelerate. Okay? That's why Teslas can accelerate so quickly. Okay? They accelerate very uniformly because they don't have a transmission or slippage or anything like that. Okay. All right. So if we're calculating acceleration, this is the formula that we use. Okay. It's the one we learned the other day that was the slope of this graph. So if this was a velocity versus time graph, okay, and we had y equals m times x plus b, and we manipulated for slope, we said that would be y minus b over x. And on that graph, that would be final velocity would be y. Initial velocity would be b, because that would be our velocity at a time of zero, okay? And whatever x is would be our time, okay? That would be the final time minus the initial time, which we usually just write like that. So this formula is on your formula sheet. Sometimes it's written like this. Anytime you see delta, that's the triangle, it means change or, or final minus initial. Okay, so sometimes we'll see it written like that. Okay, question so far on what acceleration is? So if I want to use this formula, okay, it's pretty straightforward. So let's say we had this word problem here. So suppose the plane in the picture below starts from rest. Now that's a term that's new. If you are at rest, how fast are you going? You're not going. You're not going anywhere because you're at rest. Okay, so if something starts from rest, its initial velocity is zero. What about if it comes to rest? Okay, so its final velocity is zero because it comes to a stop. Okay, so anytime you see the word rest, it means not moving. So if something starts from rest, its initial velocity is zero. If it comes to rest, its final velocity is zero. Okay, so that's what the term means. It's important to know that. All right, plane accelerates down the runway and 29 seconds later is moving at 72, positive 72 meters per second, okay? Where the plus sign indicates the velocity points to the right. So in my answer here, is that answer right or wrong? And I don't mean the number. The number is right. Which is more accurate, plus or right as a direction? Right. Okay. The question said the plus sign indicates movement to the right. So my answer should say 2.5 meters per second squared, right. Okay. That would be more correct then positive 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so for calculating acceleration, we just plug those numbers into the formula. So we would have our final velocity, positive 72, minus our initial velocity, zero, and that took 29 seconds. So if we perform that operation, top divided by bottom, okay, we would get 2.5 meters per second squared units. We talked about that the other day. Okay, this. Algebra. What if I want to solve for t? How do I manipulate this equation? That you multiply by t on the right side. Then you do the same to the other side. And then you divide by a. And then you get t on the other side. Yep, that's how I would solve for t. Okay, good. Let 
What if I want to solve for Vf? Absolutely. Okay, we follow those rules of algebra. I moved what wasn't attached first. T was not attached to VF, so I moved it first, and then I would add VI to both sides. You thought that was just the mark on the screen, didn't you? That's for making my plus sign. Okay, so um, now I've got that. Now, that should sort of make sense. If we think about this logically, Okay, if we go back to this setup here, okay, t times a equals the change in velocity. That's what this part of the equation says. Agreed? Okay, so if I bring vi over here by adding it, this equation should make sense. If I take what my initial velocity is and add the change in velocity to it, I should get my final, right? From a logical perspective, okay. Now, what if I wanted to solve for VF instead? Or sorry, for VI instead. I like that. What am I doing that with? You're gonna subtract uh, VF from TA You were on the right track. I think you second guessed yeah. yourself. No, you just. I know what you want to do, but you yeah. think you can't do it. You're thinking of moving T and A together, right? But you think you're moving T and A together? No, I was gonna do it the other way. Move that over and move, like replace it. Replace V F and V I. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, could do that, but it'll solve for negative V I. Okay. So, here's what I want to do. I want to move the T and A over to the other side together. Because if I was doing order of operations here, would I multiply these numbers together before I added them to this one? Which means they're really just one number, right? So it's like VI plus X. Could I just move X over to the other side? I could, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to subtract them over to the other side. And now I've got VI. Now, remember that logical explanation I gave you a minute ago where I said VI plus the change equals VF? Am I doing the opposite now? VF minus the change equals VI. Okay, so the reason I didn't want to do it the way you were proposing, Nico, was that way would work mathematically, but it would solve for negative VI. So if my answer was supposed to be right, I would get left, right? Which is fine as long as I remember I solved for the negative value and I have to switch it. I always forget to do that, so I never do it that way. Okay? Um, you're perfectly capable of doing it that way if you want to, just you have to remember I solved for a negative number, so I have to switch the direction. Yeah. Okay, everyone all right with the manipulations there? Okay, we're gonna have to do a bit of algebra here, okay? Um, and again, don't just write down all the manipulations on a piece of paper because you have to be able to do this on a test. Okay? You have to be able to manipulate this thing without looking at it written down already somewhere. Okay, I want you guys to write this one down and then we'll go through it together. This one's really easy, but just like I always do when we have a new formula, I go through one question for each manipulation of that formula. So this will be our first one. Okay, so if we're going to solve this one, okay, um, so we got a sprinter who starts from rest. What did they just tell me there? Their initial velocity is zero. Exactly. Okay, and reaches a velocity of positive 16 meters per second. What did they give me there? That the final velocity is 16. Positive 16, right? All 
All right, and they do that in four and a half seconds. So that would be the time. Okay, what is their acceleration? Okay, so we're looking for the acceleration in this question. Okay, so as always, we write down our given. So we would get a mark for doing that. Okay, that helps me to pick the correct formula to use because, well, by the end of this unit, you're going to have quite a few formulas to choose from, and writing down your given helps you decide which formula I have to use. Okay. Now, this formula is already set up to calculate A with the three things I have, so I don't have to do any manipulations. I just need to plug in my numbers. So A will equal positive 16 minus 0 divided by 4.5. So I'm getting 3.56 meters per second squared, and it would be positive. How did I know it was positive? Well, first off, it says it went from 0 to positive 16. That tells me that the acceleration was in not only the positive direction, but also that it made it go faster. Okay. All right. Everybody okay with how that one worked? Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Copy this one down. Give it a try. You're going to have to manipulate the formula this time, but we've gone over this manipulation. Okay. So I'll give you a few minutes on that one. Okay, so for this one here, okay, it's looking for how long it will take. What is it asking me to solve for? Time. time. Okay, so time is my unknown in this question. Okay, uh, for a jet to accelerate from rest to positive 85 meters per second at a rate of positive 22 meters per second squared. How did I know that was an acceleration? It says right before the number. Um, well, it says at a rate, yeah, changing its velocity, but also I looked at the what? The squared. Yeah, I looked at the units, right? Meters per second squared are the units for acceleration. Okay? That's usually your best bet, is to look at what the units are on something if you're not sure from the context of the question what that number is. Look at the units and you'll be able to tell what it is. Meters per second squared are the units for acceleration. Okay, um, so now that I've got those, I need to solve for t. That means I'm going to use this formula again because it's the only one that's got the three things in it that I have and the thing I'm looking for. So I need to manipulate for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t to bring it over here. Why wouldn't I just move vf minus vi over? Where will that leave T? On the bottom. Can I solve for something if it's on the bottom? No. OK, so now I've got T times A equals VF minus VI. I want T by itself, so I divide both sides by A. Right? So T will equal my final velocity, positive 85, minus my initial velocity, 0, divided by 22, positive 22 meters per second squared. Okay, so it's really just 85 over 22. Okay, so 3.86 seconds is how long that would take. Okay, we're going to be working on that tomorrow, most of class. Okay, and then we got our lab on Thursday. Guys, do not be afraid to come in for help if you are struggling with the graphing or the acceleration or anything like that. Okay, there's no shame in coming in and asking for help. Okay, um, better to do that than to not do well later. So don't be shy about that.